Welcome to the Minority Report with Ed Greer. Uh, today I have a guest, uh, Mr. Kurt Conrad, CEO of uh, SARTA. Welcome, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, wanted to bring you back, Kurt, uh, and maybe you could give us some updates on some of the new th things that are going on in SARTA that the residents of Western Star County might be interested since we do have a lot of uh, people over here that ride that take advantage of that service. Well, before we do that, I, I thought we should point out to the to the viewers that we're actually in Ed's house here, and that's why they were sitting by his 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 uh, his bookcase here, his chairs. There's a little fire off to the side. You can see it. I'm glad your dog's sitting over there too. It's, it's a great visual. I'm not sure why he has an iguana, but it's fun. Anyway, uh, we're actually at the library. I, so so here at Sarda, we we you know we. One of the nice things, you viewers may have seen our fuel cell buses running, running around. Uh, we actually have um, uh, seven fuel cell buses on the property. Last night we just approved the order of seven, uh, five more 40-foot buses, which would take us up to a total of 13. Uh, we were actually then awarded a grant by the US EPA for the development of a small, like, Proline bus uh, to be a fuel cell vehicle also. We got enough funding for five of those, and we'll be the first one in the country developing that that uh, series of vehicles. Uh, so that will actually put us up to like 17 fuel cell vehicles, which would, at that point, uh, probably make us the largest fleet in the country. Uh, so that's some pretty exciting things going on there. Uh, I, I want to say publicly uh, to uh, residents and citizens of Western Star County, I think that this gentleman here has done an outstanding job uh, for the county in terms of getting grants and being up on all the latest technology, and we're one of the few bus companies in the country that have done some of the things that that this uh, company, uh, this agency, has been able to do. So I want to personally thank, no, thank you, Kurt, uh, and it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, serving on the board, representing the city of Massillon. You know, one of the interesting things is uh, just a couple weeks ago, I was actually in Toronto. They, they invited me to come up and give a presentation to some cities in the uh, suburban. Toronto that are actually thinking about doing it and they're putting together this whole proposal to take to the Canadian government. So we've been involved there. Um, we've also had some outreach from the Australian Embassy wanting wow. to know <laughs> what we're doing. So it, it seems like not only are we important in West, you know, and here in Maslin the people are, but we're getting attention from an international perspective of what we're doing. So it's kind of that's, kind of neat. That's fantastic. Now the new buses, the, the big buses now that, that are running out there, how many, how many of those do we have? We have seven on property, and then we're ordering five more. Five more. And nothing but water comes out at the, at the Well, end. sometimes people come out, too. They get <laughs> off the bus. But that's, I mean, the water comes out of the Yeah, the I mean, environment, I mean, how environment friendly can you be? I mean, that's just uh, tremendous. Yeah, it's, it's zero emissions, so there's no, no exhaust that comes out of it. Um, you, know, you just use the hydrogen to create electricity through a fuel cell. Uh, the interesting thing about it is, uh, if you uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to ride them, they they run here on uh, you know Tuscarawas here um, out of Massland to, to Canton. If you have an opportunity to ride them, they they're pretty quiet. And the funny thing is, people get on the bus and normally they'd have normal conversations because of the bus noise kind of drowns them out. But it's like you can hear everything. <laughs> it's like what are they talking about over there? And it's kind of funny in a way because they're electric drive motors and they're pretty quiet. Uh -huh. It's kind of funny. Now, are we going to be able to? Uh, I know we do some transporting now with the Hall of Fame. Are we going to? Since it's going to be quite a national, it's already a national treasure, but now it's probably going to be international with all the money they're putting <coughs> into it. Are, are, are there been any conversation with Mr. David Baker in terms of how we could play uh, the transit could play a role in that? We absolutely do not talk with them whatsoever. We share no information with them. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> So we're actually planning with the Hall of Fame, we're developing a grants, some grants right now in conjunction with, with the state of Ohio uh, to put together an autonomous vehicle that actually would, a self-driving bus, so to speak, that would serve both the, um, within the Hall of Fame village footprint itself and then also would serve remote parking connecting to the, uh, um, to the Hall of Fame itself. And the interesting thing about that project is from the Ohio Department of Transportation, we're literally writing the grant right now, not this second, I'm not doing, but um, 
we've got staff that's working on developing that grant. And Governor Kasich had, um, via executive order, created a new program called Drive Ohio, where the state is trying to push forward on all um, smart uh, transportation, autonomous vehicles, alternative energies um, around transportation, because the governor feels um, that with this new technology coming down, that it, they want Ohio, the state of Ohio, to be in a leadership position and develop the, these new technologies, one, and applying them here in the state, and then two, seeing that we can't have more and more of these, uh, the, in, the IT infrastructure, so to speak, that's being de developed around the transportation infrastructure, actually done and made here in Ohio. So we're actually a leader when it comes to autonomous technology here in the state. Mm -hmm. And he just signed another executive order allowing self-driving cars to be tested on Ohio roadways. So it's actually a pretty good partnership with the state wants to put some vehicles up here in Canton and then some other ones in the Columbus area. So it's kind of an interesting pilot program that we're working with them on. Okay. So uh, is ridership, you know, under, uh, you know, I know there was some funding that was cut on the, the national level that probably trickled down. Yeah. Uh, has the ridership changed much since that has happened or is it still up and growing? What, what's your opinion we, we, on that? For about the last year or so, we actually saw ridership declining a little bit because gas prices being so cheap. It's, it's funny, when gas prices go up, our ridership goes up. When it goes down, our ridership goes down. Uh, so it's, it's pretty well linked to the gas prices. And, and the theory behind that of thinking is that Probably 40% of our riders have access to a vehicle, or indirect, directly or indirectly. And so, um, when, when gas prices go up, they park the car and ride the bus, is what, what we see in some of that. Uh -huh. um, also, when unemployment, uh, on the other side, when unemployment goes down, our ridership goes up somewhat, because when you get those sec, you know, they may have, you know, if you're living in a household as one car and that car is driving somebody to work and the second person wants to go to work or do anything, they ride the bus. So those two those two macro trends, so to speak, that's kind of how that affects transit. But we have seen our ridership in the last several months starting to go back up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and the other interesting thing is that our ridership is kind of linked to, to schools too. Mm -hmm. um, when the economy is doing better, like, enrollment for universities goes down because everybody out, out and get the job, gets a job. So we're seeing some of those segments of uh, the community ridership going down a little bit because of uh, people going to work. So it's kind of interesting from an economic point of view how the larger economic trends affect to show up in uh -huh. our ridership. I got on the bus. Uh, it stops right out in front of my house there. I live on the uh, southeast end on Dwight Avenue and it stops right there on the corner. Third and Dwight, so I got on and uh, got a transfer, and I went over to the southwest where most of the plants are, mm -hmm. and uh, it came within probably a block or two of where most of the plants were. So if they were taking the bus, they probably didn't have to walk no more than a block or two, mm -hmm. maybe three to their job. We went all the way down to uh, on 21. Uh, to Flemings and uh, mm -hmm. some of the companies down there and also on Navarre Road, you know. And it, it came within about uh, two or three blocks of where you had to go to get uh, to your job. So I was really, really impressed with that to say that, hey, you want a job, you don't have transportation. Sardo gets you there. We're the, pretty close yeah. to getting you there. <laughs> there's, there's another company down there called Sterilite that we just, we build the trips Sterilite, yeah. um, around their shift schedules. Um, and we've done that with a, with a number of employers throughout the county. Um, trying to build our route structure around their their uh, shift times and that stuff, and we actually have seen we've redone working with you done, redone some of the service on the southwest side to try to address the growth down there. Right. It, one thing is we have seen in, interesting is the ridership in in Canton's actually been decreasing somewhat, but in Maslin we've seen ridership actually increasing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that has to do with what you're saying with the uh, additional jobs that are down there. Right. Right. So I, I was really, really impressed with that. I said, there's no excuse if you want a job <laughs> and don't have a car, you know, we'll get you pretty close to where you need to be. Yeah, and we, I mean, employment is the largest reason people ride the bus. About 50% of everybody ride the bus to go to work. And then about 30% are going to school, and then uh, going to medical is about 10%, and shopping finishes it out. So 
you know, it, we have a pretty big empo employment impact in the county. We, the last time we did a, a, a re some research, we think we probably transport uh, 50, 5,200 people to work or support that many jobs in our community. So that's, that's, that's 5,000, you know, if you think about 5,000 jobs we help support in the community, that's a pretty big impact. And that's every day, about yeah. 5,000, mm -hmm. wow, that is impact. Mm -hmm. now, how about uh, going to uh, the, the colleges around here? We got four or five colleges here in the Star do, do you help in terms of getting students to some of these schools or not? <clears throat> yeah, the, probably the, 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 the two big uh, relationships we have, one was with uh, Stark State. Um, we started, kicked off a relationship with them last year when they were expanding it in, in the Akron market uh, that anybody could, uh, we, uh, an express route um, that goes directly from Akron to uh, Stark State. But we also packaged that together with anybody as a student at Stark State can, sh get, can ride the bus for free. You just get on the bus, show them your ID, and ride for free anywhere oh. in the county, anywhere. So we're pretty proud of that that relationship, and we'll, we'll probably see I don't know ten thousand rides a month, um, just using that as past program. Wow. Another interesting pro, um, partnership we have is with Kent State University is Stark, and they actually have a program where they bring students from China to Canton, and there are about forty of them or something like that, and they'll be here for. A semester <clears throat> and they come over here to try to learn English and so uh, and they actually end up staying at one of the hotels down close to uh, uh, off of Whipple there and so we'll do a couple express trips at, every day up to Kent State for them and then we also support them by giving them free bus passes and we also then end up we'll transport them to main campus and some other places um, around the county too so we that's an example of how we kind of formed our service around a specific need um, that comes up like that. And then in the summertime, we'll, we'll support some day camps and that kind of stuff too with the schools. So we, we try to react to what the community needs are. Um, you know, I guess since, you know, we, we dealt with the Chinese embassy, the Australian embassy, and the Canadians today. Um, so we're, we're pretty busy on the international <laughs> level. Um, it is kind of funny when you uh, think about it. How about the, uh, I know you, you, you make trips to Cleveland for the veterans. Yeah. Now, are they uh, are they charged anything, the veterans, to go to Cleveland? The veterans where? are free. The veterans are free. <clears throat> but if you're, you know, like if, if you and Jay David want to go to Cleveland for the day, um, you can uh, ride to Cleveland each way for a dollar fifty. so you get to Cleveland for, you know, a buck fifty uh, each way, and it drops in downtown Cleveland. Uh, and then you can then from there you can get off our bus and get on either the rapid or any Cleveland RTA bus and ride anywhere in Cleveland for free. Um, so that's a, a nice partnership yeah. right there. Now what it, do you have to have to have some documentation say like I'm a veteran. So if I want to go and get on the bus, you'll have to show my DD two fourteen or the, the veterans card that I have. Uh, or get signed up. How, how, how does usually, that work? Usually, they work with the Stark County Veterans Com Veterans Commission oh, okay. on getting. Uh, they'll have tickets and passes, that kind of stuff, and they'll, they usually give us a list okay. of people that, that are riding. So, um, and, and that's ma mainly go up there to Wade Park. Okay. And we'll we'll transport a thousand to fifteen hundred people a month. Wow. Up up there. How many trips do you make a day? Three trips. So it's basically you know we 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 had set it up so if you had an AM appointment. You could ride up there on the bus, and then we send another bus back at noon, and then you could come home. And then, so if you had an afternoon appointment, you ride that bus, and then there's an evening bus that comes home. So it it, it really around trying to get those uh, vets vets done. And the one thing that I'd heard this story where this this individual had I don't know if it was a vet or not, but was getting chemo treatment for cancer at Cleveland Clinic. And we're literally riding the our, our bus to Akron, transferring to an Akron bus, and then transferring an Akron to the health line out to. But when we actually put this express route in, they took that instead um, to get direct access to. to Wade Park's pretty close to Cleveland Clinic, Great. and so then they just it was a much faster way for them to do. But the one the one thing you don't know about when you provide transit or transportation how people are going to find a way to use it to benefit their lives. And that story there, just I, I, I couldn't imagine what you would have to go through on a, you know, a basis to go up there for, for treatment and using the bus system and transferring that many times. But 
they found a way to do it and, and they were able to access you know needed health care in that manner um, and it's just kind of when you hear those kind of stories it it just kind of like oh, wow that's amazing so for most people that ride in transit is something they absolutely need and if there if we weren't there many times there wouldn't have another option mm -hmm. so it's it's really um, in those stories there it's really a needed thing how about a, a person uh I have a cousin that's still living in their house, and they're up in the 80s, and they need to go to the doctor. Uh, well, you can take them. They, they would. You can take them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they uh, have to have a doctor's uh, slip or something so that they could call you and say, "I need to go to the doctor on such and such a day"? How, how does that? Work? So, Proline is a service for ind individuals that have a disability. Uh, it's recognized by the ADA that, that that helps that keeps them from getting around very very much, and they do have to have a doctor's um, uh, applicant. We have an application you need to fill out, but once that's done, you can uh, call. Um, uh, uh, like for tomorrow, you can call uh, and schedule out like four days out, and then we'll come to your house and take you anywhere in Stark County you, you want to go. In other words, I got to call four days ahead of time. Well, you can call. Well, we want you to schedule. If if you want to go to tomorrow, you need to call today. Okay. You need to call at least one day in advance. Okay. Um, but then we'll come to your house tomorrow and take you. If you want to go to the doctor or to work or uh, shopping, we'll come and then take you directly where you want to go and then bring it back. Okay. So you'll pick me up at the door at my house and take me where I want to go and then bring me back to the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. That's a tremendous service. That uh, now do you have uh, numbers on how many? Uh, uh, citizens take advantage of that, or yeah, we transport about 150,000 people a year that way. About wow. 700 a day, 700 trips a day that way. Well, that is that's a fantastic service because you know now people are you know still active in their 70s and 80s, and so it's not like it was you know 30 years ago, and you know so that's a tremendous service that you offer there. And we're we're actually looking at we're in the middle of a updating our services right now. We just did a public meeting this week, asking people to give us input on what services are needed and what we can do differently, better to help us kind of frame our next five-year plan. Um, there will be some other focus groups and that kind of stuff going on throughout the county in the next you know, month or so. Um, we also have surveys that are on our website that you can go to and fill out uh, at startonline.com or tell us on our Facebook, our Facebook page what you'd like to see. So we really take that input on trying to exp what telling people what transportation needs they have or places that they like to see us go. If they let us know that information, then we can put that into our um, our process and evaluate those transportation needs. Now, has affairs, uh, Kurt, pretty much stayed the same over the last, say, four or five years? Or We have not raised, we have not changed the raised fares since September of 2009. Wow. Well, that, that's, uh, that's tremendous. The one thing I think us and the, the, the we had started on the board want to try to do is we, we do feel that people should make a contribution to their ride. But when you think about the per capita income of our riders are like ten between ten and twenty thousand dollars a year, you don't want to take grandma's lost dollar and make a decision between you know, drive uh, between taking the bus and paying for prescription. So we try to keep our our fares as is we, we try to keep them as low as possible um, because really I mean, the sales tax operates it pays for most of the operation and fares do pay for about 10 percent of our operation but we don't the system doesn't exist just out of the fare box so to speak and i know you've been uh pretty successful uh, i know since i've been on the board and getting grants uh mm -hmm. to pay for a lot of the buses and things that we've done so uh, that's that's been a big plus, I think. Well, and, and the funny thing, the way that um, the federal government's set up right now, and the, the budgets and that stuff, it seems like they're cutting programmatic funds, like you know, giving you a hundred, giving you a thousand dollars a year because you know, in a, in a formula or something, like moving everything to competitive grants. And so you're, we're we're probably in the midst of writing five major proposals right now. So you're, you've always got to chase the dollars, and um, and so we're, we've got a pretty good staff and in, in in place to help do that to achieve our, um, I, I think over the last five years we've gotten in almost, this is, 
if I remember correctly, it's like over over fifty million dollars. Wow! To, <laughs> in extra grant funds that's on fantastic. a competitive basis. Uh, that's fantastic, I tell you. I mean, they, they want to pass out the money. We'll we'll try to get it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's that's really great. Any any uh, final thoughts? Anything that maybe we need over here to know about? Uh, any route changes or anything else coming up that maybe uh, Western Star County citizens need to know about? I think the biggest thing is if you if you know some some transportation needs that we haven't met, to go to our website and fill out the survey, let us know what it is, so we can start planning that um, as we as we go forward. Because there are going to be changes coming down the pipe, the pike, so to speak, um, because of different requirements and that. So we, we do have to make we will be making some modifications to our route structure and different services. So. You know, if you if you have an idea, now is the time to tell us. <laughs> okay, Kurt, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to come over, and uh, it's always it's always good to be here at your house, Ed. <laughs> Glad to thank thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thanks so much for coming.